So I've been getting a lot of comments lately asking about my rune light settings because in my videos the client looks so clear and it kind of pops, maybe more than your client does. Um, so instead of just typing out all of these settings every single time that somebody asks me, I've decided to make a video showing how you can make your client go from the default settings that look like this, turn into something more like this. So just a few seconds before getting into all of my settings, I just want to remind you all that if you end up enjoying this video and it helped you out, please hit that subscribe button as I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers by the end of February. I've gotten a ton of subscribers over my last few videos, so I also just wanted to thank all of you who have already subscribed, so thank you so much. Anyway, let's get into the rune light settings. Okay, so first things first, you are going to want to turn on animation smoothing. Check all three of these boxes and turn it on. Doing so will make your guy more fluid with his motions and his turns while just basically standing there, as opposed to if it's off. He kind of just lags around, kind of jumpily. I don't know how to explain it, but you, you guys all know. We all play old school. So turn on animation smoothing, and your guy will move around much more smoothly. Once you have that turned on, go on down to the camera. And what you're going to want to do is obviously turn that on. Expand the inner zoom limit that lets you zoom in a lot farther than usual, because without it, you can only zoom in this far, and with it, you can zoom in that far. It's not that big of a difference, but it is kind of nice whenever you're checking out your outfits. Also, you want to expand your outer zoom limit to 250. That lets you zoom all the way out here. You might not realize why you might want to do that, but it helps a lot, especially if you want to run places because you could click over there and your guy will run all the way over there. I also turn on vertical camera that lets you see your guy from the top down. Helps a lot in things like Winter Todd, things like that. It's just more camera options for you. And then I have my zoom speed on 25. Uh, that's just how fast you zoom in and out. But anyway, once you've turned the camera option on and done those settings, the next one, which is going to make the biggest difference, is the GPU. This one is going to be entirely based on what your computer can really handle. I still don't think it's a big deal if you don't have the best computer, because I kind of don't, but all of this works fine for me. So draw distance. I have mine set to 90, which is the max, because if you don't, your game... Whoa. Honestly, I don't know why it went like this, but if you don't have your draw distance on, your game basically stops there. I don't know why it got all pixelated when I did that. It's probably messing up a different setting that I have. But anyway, so turn on GPU and change your draw distance to 90. That lets you see all the way over there. Also, you are going to want to remove color banding. If you don't know what color banding is, you can kind of see it over here. You see how on each square it's like a dark color and then it gets a little lighter and then a little lighter and all these lines. So if you turn it off, it kind of turns into a gradient that isn't as harsh and it looks a lot better. Up next is UI scaling. You are going to want to turn it on to bicubic catmull rom. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but that is one for your sharpness. Or if you're looking for more of a smoother look, you could do the XBR. Kind of smooths everything out a little bit, gives it more of a rounded edge. Lines aren't as harsh. However, since I make videos, I want mine on the sharpness mode. So it is on bicubic catmull rom. Also, anti-aliasing, you are definitely going to want to have that on because as you can see, it's kind of like choppy. The lines are kind of like, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but whatever. I turned mine on MSA 16 and it makes everything ridiculously smooth. So for example, again, that's without it and this is with it. This option here that I can't really pronounce, anisotropic, I think maybe, I don't know. I just turned mine on for because I don't know really what it does and it's never been a problem for me. <laughs> and then also I just skipped, I realized uh, fog depth. I have that on five. That's basically, if you're zoomed all the way out, the edge that you can see. So if I turn it all the way down, it's a harsh line. That's as far as I can see, that's as far as I can click. If I turn it up to five, kind of just fades it out a little, it looks really good. You could also turn this all the way up if you want to like, like way high and uh, looks kind of stupid, but it is what it is. Also, another setting is bright textures. I don't ever have this on, but it is kind of nice looking. Yeah, just brightens everything up, gets rid of the shadowing. I like the shadows, so yeah. Alrighty, now that you have GPU turned on, the next setting that I have on is low detail. So this is the game without low detail mode. It does have a lot more detail. You can see the grass and stuff, but I think it kind of looks chunky, kind of looks bad. Especially if you're just, you know, just looking at the screen for a while. It's just a bit busy. I always turn on low detail mode, cleans all of the grass and stuff up, makes everything look a lot more smooth. But that one's completely up to you. It doesn't really improve or take away any of your graphics or anything like that. So yeah, it's just completely up to your preference. 
Up next is resource packs because normally the game looks like this and uh, it's a lot brighter. It's a lot more whatever. It's not really my vibe though. I really like the dark mode. I did make a video in the past on how you can do this. I'll link it up at the top here right now, but I'm not sure how accurate that is because I've gotten comments on it saying that it's been updated since then and everybody can do this without going through all the steps that I went through in the video. So yeah, I just keep it on dark mode. That kind of makes everything pop as well. The next one is called Skybox, and this one isn't necessary, but it's just something that I like because that just adds basically a Skybox to your game. Because without Skybox, this is what the game would look like. It's just all black. Everything's black. It's super harsh, and it kind of takes you out of the zone. At least I think so. So I always have my Skybox on, and it just brightens it up a bit. It's not as a Debbie Downer kind of look. I don't know how else to explain that. And the last option here that I have turned on is Stretched Mode. I have it on increased performance mode. I really don't know what the difference is here, but I have my stretch mode on because without stretch mode, the game would look like this. And yes, you could see a lot you could do whatever, but everything down here is super small. All of your UI is very tiny. So I turn stretch mode on, turn resizable scaling to 100% and it gets this big, which is very helpful for videos and things like that because I can have this game in full screen mode for me and you guys can still see what is going on. But yeah, other than that, that is about it for all of my rune light settings. However, you guys might have noticed that I didn't say anything about the color in the videos, and that is because I do that post-production. So I am sorry to say, but your game isn't going to ever most likely look like mine, color-wise at least, because I edit that after the fact. But I am going to show you real quick the settings that I do have for color correction. For those of you who do make videos, you guys can see my settings, and yeah. Okay, so I just opened up Sony Vegas, and yes, I do use Sony Vegas. It's very simple. So for example, I am just going to put a clip in here from earlier, and I always say to match the media, and then this is what I do. I right-click the clip, go to Properties, Disable Resample, that gets rid of ghosting, and then this is where the color and stuff comes in. I add a Sony Color Corrector filter, and I add a Sony Sharpen filter. I have presets already saved which I will show you here, but color corrector, I have OSRS2 saved, and the settings for that are here, 1.166 color saturation, 1.032 gain, 1.037 gamma, and negative 4.8 offset. Now I know a lot of you guys who don't make videos probably don't know what I'm talking about, but for those of you who do, those are my settings for color correction. And then for Sony Sharpen, I have my other preset for OSRS, which is just 0.085. So yeah, so that's how I make the color go from what you see here. So this is it without color correction. And this is the clip with color correction. It is very slight, but it is also very noticeable at the same time. But yeah, that about sums it up for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like below. And if you're new here, be sure to check out the other videos on this channel. And if you like those videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. But anyway, with all of that being said, Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.